Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our channel Testing in Nutshell. This is Nish Kumar Singh and we are talking about our X-ray tutorial series. As a part of today's tutorial where we'll be slightly extending just like our previous tutorial and we'll be talking about defect mapping in X-ray. It also becomes very crucially important for a testing team to make sure that all your defects which are raised or created during test executions are not orphan at any point of time. When I say orphan here, it certainly means that a defect has to be backlinked to the respective test executions, test cases, or even the requirements, so that a requirement when looked at within JIRA should be highlighting me that, hey, there are so many defects which are open. At any point, if I'm looking, pretty, looking at a particular defect, I should know which test case reveal this particular defect and how this test is contributing with several other defects also. At the same time, if I'm opening a defect page or defect issue in our requirements, or oh sorry, in JIRA, I need to make sure that this defect was created by which execution or which test case and in turn is related to which requirement. So a visibility to having this complete mapping to one another issue type is what you call it as defect mapping. And this could be done pretty well with the relationships which are already existing within JIRA, like blocks, block by, duplicates, duplicated by. But don't forget as X-ray adds some additional relationships when you embed X-ray with JIRA, you'll find something created and created by. Just like tests and tested by given by the X-ray, you'll have some more relationships. Now let's understand how exactly defect mapping can be done within JIRA using X-ray. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be trying to understand the defect coverage in X-ray or defect mapping in X-ray, where we'll be starting with enabling defect mapping uh, issue type in the X-ray, linking the defects to that of the test and the requirement, and at the same time viewing the outcome, which is how exactly this coverage can be seen. In order to get started, we will be looking forward to first set up the mapping and the defect coverage is all about that the defect is related to what test and what requirements. If you would like to have a quick list of the same, we can pretty much do it with help of defect mapping in X-ray, which are very rarely known to the people in order to organize their defect coverage details. So to get started again, we have to enable this option from the project settings where you would find the section called as apps. And if you open the app section here, you would find the X-ray specific settings in order to configure that to the JIRA. Now here, in our previous tutorial, we did the same steps to configure our test coverage measurement. Right below that, you have another option called as defect mapping. And you need to tell the JIRA that or X-ray that which issue type will make it as a defect in your project. And if I link it, what exactly would it make sense as? right so I'll be calling out the bug issue type to map all our defects to that of the requirement and the test or the test execution you can establish relationship with any of them right the test execution the test or even directly the requirement which is your story so don't forget to save this change or else people just revert back and they don't find this happening right uh, so let's come back to this and uh, assume that I'm logging some defects here so again, it's just a common process that you might be executing something and you got a defect and you can create a defect right from there. But just now to save our time, I'll be just logging some defect uh, randomly here. So to say, for example, defect sample one and uh, create a few of them. So I'll just uh, enable this option here. And I would say second one is defect sample two and create and let's say I've got three defects, defect sample three and uncheck this button because I don't want to continue any further and that's it. So I've got all these bugs on my backlog right now because uh, they're not in the current uh, board so you would find my bugs right here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, understanding that how exactly I can enable this so I'll just go ahead and uh, look on the Kanban board where I have few tests here. So let me pick up one of the tests, for example, Delivery Boy. And here the relationship what we get from X-Ray 
to have this defect mapping being done is called as created okay and again active and passive if you are in the test you can say you know creates this particular defect or if you're in the defect is created by that particular test so I'll just click on the link issue again here and I would say the relationship is created or created by so created by is basically for the defect right so we are in the test now has the so the test has created a defect and the defect is let me just call it out defect sample one right I'll just link it and if required you think there's any other thing which you would like to do you can even add more defects here for example uh, let me just uh, link this particular item to another one and say we got two defects here so created another defect and that is defect sample 2 and uh, I think for this test we have not done the requirement coverage so let us link the requirements too so this test uh, tests the uh, development story which is for sorry what is this for delivery partner so let's pull this for delivery partner so we also did the requirement coverage here right let's go back to the story and see the behavior change on the screen and uh, right now we just did the establishment with the test not with the requirement so I would go to the requirement and also add the defect there too right because right now what we have linked is between test and the defect right we have not done it for story and the defect right the requirement and the defect right so let's pull the requirement out here now we should see the test coverage uh, for the uh, requirement we got the test here right it says one is pass one is to do just like the last time I'm adding the defect also which is related to the requirement so it is uh, uh, tested by this particular defect what is the defect okay so say for example sample one and defect sample two there are two defects here oops and click on link right so this makes my job complete in terms of the defect mapping and I'll just close this and refresh and see if there's any kind of transformation which happens on my screen in order to have this relationship established so if I just come up on my screen this time I should uh, see the list of all that information what we have for example these are tested by these two things and uh, it is also related to this which is tested by these two defects so once these two defects are done my requirement will be done as well right so I would find this option right here and you can pretty much do this along with that information too right Let's also go back to uh, our defect and see if that defect shows me any specific information about the same. So I'll just open up a defect uh, sample here and I'll come back here and I would see that hey I got the same information here too. That means it has been established with the relationship that uh, it is created by so and so test and the test uh, is also you know this defect is also testing this particular story. because. I do understand people may have a slight confusion that how come a defect is testing something because a defect is all about the requirement completion so until unless this defect is closed it's the requirement is not yet tested right so that's the reason we use this relationship but the major relationship here is created by and this created by relationship will establish the uh, coverage measurement of the defects so here it just happens straightforward with respect to the defect and you can build up the same thing right so you can do the association here and this would uh, come up as your uh, linking and you can pretty much see the defects being associated and the relationship is what we use called as created by a defect mfp 33 is created by this test and tests this particular story so this is how you do the defect mapping as a part of it and it certainly allows you to do the significant mapping at any point of time. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.